Konnichiwa. We are in Tokyo and we're going to be trying some of the most mouthwatering, delicious, savory, sweet Japanese delicacies that will have you wanting to visit Japan just for the food. So if you're ready, let's go. We are at the flagship restaurant of Kura Sushi in Skytree. Now, this is my first time having revolving sushi, so I'm really excited to try it. The first Kura Sushi was opened in Sakai City, and it was just a regular sushi restaurant. And then in 1984, they opened up their first revolving sushi restaurant. They must be doing something right, because now there's over 650 locations all throughout Japan. First up, we have salmon, which has a mild flavor and a soft, delicate texture that pairs so well with Japanese rice. It literally feels like I'm biting into a cloud with the freshest salmon on top. Mm. Everything that I want keeps passing me by, and I'm not quick enough. You have to be very quick when you see something. You gotta get it. Now, what did you get? I got this um, pickle sushi roll. A pickled sushi roll? Yeah. Yeah, pickled radish sushi roll. Here we go. Cheers. <laughs> Over here. You put so much wasabi. Wow. That's so good though. You get the crunch from the pickled radish, and you get the gumminess from the rice, and then the seaweed is so flavorful, it's so yummy. Okay, so next we have bonito with salt and yuzu sauce. I don't believe I've ever had this before, and then you've got some minced ginger on top. This looks delicious. This dish has a nice smoky texture. It also had a little bit of chew to it. Now, as you can see, the outside's a little bit seared, whereas the inside is raw. It was a really nice contrast. This dish was so tasty. The first thing that we ordered on the screen is the horse mackerel tempura. Just to preface, there is no horse in this. It is a type of mackerel. It looks delicious. So let's get into it. It's kind of like fish and chip style meets sushi. Uh, it's just like having a little piece of, like, I know it's mackerel, but it kind of tasted like a could been cold, it could been havoc or something like that, on top of some really good sushi rice. It was so good. Well, my mouth, but it was really, 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 really good. Each plate was around 150 yen, which is really reasonable because the quality of sushi was so good here and we definitely ate a lot of it. <laughs> so something that's really helpful is Amir has a Google Translate app. It'll translate everything that's on the screen for him. It makes it a lot easier to travel through Japan, especially if certain menus just don't write anything in English. So it came out to 2,120, which is pretty reasonable. When you leave, it's just kind of a trust system. There's nobody at the checkout and you just scan your receipt and then you pay. So it's very trusting here, which I think is pretty cool because everybody's paying. Not us. Okay, yes we did, <laughs> we did. <laughs> we hopped on the train and 30 minutes later, we were in Ueno. Now, before we dive into the street market, let's make a quick pit stop right across the street at Ueno Park. An oasis with vibrant trees, museums, cherry blossoms in the spring, and we can't forget the zoo. This park has been hosting visitors since 1873. Its official name is Ueno Anshi Koen, meaning the Ueno Imperial Gift. And I can attest this park definitely lives up to its name. Now let's head across the street to Amiyoyo Kocho and try to find some delicious okonomiyaki. <laughs> Amiyoyo 
Yokocho has so many options when it comes to food, but Amir and I are in the mood for okonomiyaki, so we had to check out Monja Moheji Ueno. We just ordered, so now we're waiting on our food. This place does a cover charge of 380 yen, and they give you a free omelet because of that cover charge. So I'm gonna start off with an omelet and some asagi. Okay, so after five minutes, please call us. After five minutes, when this timer goes off, we just call our waiter and then I believe it'll be served to us. I think they have to flip it over. And then it will be served to us. So it's a very cool experience coming here and seeing this all done in person. Okay. What is this? Katsubushi. Katsubushi, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. What is that? Nori. Ah, nori, okay. Nori, ah, okay. <laughs> Teriyaki? Ah, okay. Ah, this smells so good. So we got these seafood okonomiyaki. It's a mixture of prawns, octopus, fish. So it's going to be delicious. This is like a seafood Japanese lasagna. That bite was chewy from the octopus, but then there's a little bit of crunch from the veggies inside. And then you also get the creaminess from the mayo and then that teriyaki sauce taste. This is delicious. Now I think that there's clams inside here too because there's something that's a little bit chewier than any other fish that I originally thought was inside here. building up the elevator to the seventh floor and have what is known as the best souffle pancakes in the world at the restaurant a happy pancake this pancake was so fluffy and as a bonus to the pancake you could even taste the sugar granules on top it was a little bit more eggy than other souffle pancakes i've tasted which did add a slight denseness to it Bit of mint. Now the mint might seem it's like it's just for show, but it it cuts the sweetness so well. The combo of the mint, the pancake, the ice cream, cream combo, how they all work together. Mm. Oh, that is really tasty. It's very tasty. I actually like the mint with everything. I, I love the flavor of mint, but I don't exactly love mint but it works really well with this pancake and then the sweetness from the whipping cream. I don't even want to call it whipped cream because it's so much better. It's like the mix of heavy whipping cream, ice cream, and butter. <laughs> so Happy Pancakes started off in Owaji Island and now they have nearly 30 locations. As you can see right now, we're in Ginza in Tokyo having this very special pancake and I definitely see why it's spread throughout Japan because it's so tasty. I don't know if you can tell, but we did not like this at all. Before we get to the ramen portion of the video, we have to stop by Kuriwa Namimono to try the most popular curry dish in Japan. 
katsu curry. Wow. Wow. This is the richest, creamiest curry that I have ever had. And this is my first time trying katsu curry. The fried breadcrumbs are flaky and crispy at the same time, and the pork is so lean and tender. As far as the curry sauce, it adds richness to the dish and is the perfect combo of sweet and savory, but it has a zing to it as well. I mean, when I was mixing just the curry sauce and the rice, it was just as enjoyable as when I had the pork mixed in as well. We just arrived at the Akihabara branch of Kyushu Jangara, where we are gonna get some ramen. I have been waiting all day to get ramen, and Amir is also super stoked because they have vegan ramen as well as the pork bone broth ramen, which I am going to get. We have been waiting in line for about 10 minutes, and I think that we have like another 30 minutes because there is quite a bit of a queue. It's really packed inside, so I think this is gonna be really good. Kyushu Jengara's Akihabara branch was the first to open in 1984. There's now multiple locations throughout Tokyo and they've even expanded to Thailand. They specialize in Hotaka-style tonkatsu ramen, which is pig fat broth. As I mentioned earlier, they have vegan ramen as well, which is made with dark soy sauce and I believe this is added to further enhance the flavor of the broth so you're not missing the taste of the animal product which Amir did enjoy. Tonkatsu ramen has become one of my favorites, partially because it's served with the long, thin noodles. And this is proof that I was way too excited and put way too much in my mouth and simply could not slurp it up. <laughs> So the broth is a little bit cloudy, but it's also so creamy at the same time. And the noodles soak all of the flavor up. It's like salty deliciousness just absorbed by these noodles. The pork that they have in here is, they give you really, really big pieces of meat. And the meat has soaked so much of the broth up and it kind of just falls apart in your mouth. But it's still very chewy, it's very delicious. Yeah, the music, I feel like I'm in like a little arcade in here. It's very cool. Our bellies are full but we still have room to go to 7-Eleven and get some mochi ice cream. Now I look forward to dessert when I wake up. So the fact that mochi ice cream is actually one of my favorite desserts ever, I have been looking forward to this all day. Now, I do not like comparing things. However, 7-Elevens in Japan are so much better than 7-Eleven convenience stores in the US. There's infinite snacks and desserts. You've got gyoza, katsu, sushi, just to name some foods. And they look like they would be served in a restaurant. So we decided to go with mochi ice cream which is my absolute favorite. We got a different flavor this time. Last time we went to 7-Eleven, we got vanilla, and this time I think it's like a... Chocolate chip? It's like a chocolate chip. <laughs> a chocolate chip mochi ice cream. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Mmm. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely delicious. You have the gooeyness from the mochi on the outside, and then you've got the vanilla ice cream with the chocolate. They're not like chocolate chips, but they're just, um, they kind of taste like miniature malt balls. And they are delicious. And the vanilla ice cream is sweet, but not too sweet. This is the perfect way 
to end the night. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.